All right, I'm going to finish up tonight on our motives or uh, intentions. Intentions aren't enough. Ooh, a little dizzy. Um, my throat's getting scratchy, and I don't like feeling bad. Um, I want to very quickly start off with uh, 2 Corinthians 5 1. 2 Corinthians 5 1. If you have your Bibles, I want you to go to the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 5. We'll read verse number 1. Hmm. <clears throat> motivation for the future, living in the presence of Christ here. Motivation for the future presence of Christ. Now, I believe in the presence of Christ. I believe that, uh, there, that he will physically rule and reign on the throne in Jerusalem. I believe that. I believe that after the thousand-year reign, that God is going to make all things new again, a new heaven, a new earth. And uh, I believe that. And though I believe that, and, and I try to keep that in mind, I still find Paul, Paul's not Paul's law, but the law that he found in himself. You remember what he said? I then find a law that there's a, there's a war going on inside of me. Uh, there's a law that the, that the good that I would do, I don't do, and the, the evil that I would not do, that I do. Why? Because there's a war going on inside of me. And um, uh, he says that if I serve uh, the flesh, I would do it with the flesh. But if I serve the Lord, I do it with the mind. And that doesn't mean I just think good things. It means I have mind over matter. Anybody heard that term before? Mind over matter? Of course you have. Mind over matter, and I want my mind to be over my matter, and I want to let my mind motivate me, and Scripture motivate me. The Bible says, of course, saved unto good works. Now, uh, we're going to talk about the tabernacle and the temple. Not uh, We're not going to get too too deep in, in real Old Testament, but I want to see, read 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 1. It says, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle, will, tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Heavenly Father, bless us tonight and help us tonight to live for you. Uh, Lord, I'd ask that you would help us, Lord, to um, when the motivation is running low, uh, our love for you to shine through. Uh, and then, Lord, I, I, I believe this, that if uh, we'll use that motivation while it's hot and uh, uh, warm ourselves while there's plenty of wood on the fire and wood on the pile and burn, 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 burn and create spiritual habits in our life and, and, and spiritual um, uh, 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 sequences and schedules in our life to where we just show up good and bad, and we do what's right, good and bad, and, and, and no matter the circumstances, we we'll develop these things in our life. When the motivation is running low, we'll continue to do right. When, when the love just doesn't seem like it's abounding, we continue to do right. Uh, until we can get back on our feet, until we can get that fire in us again, hot again, and get bit by the bug again, uh, uh, develop these habits, the scripturally principled habits, that we can do what's right, uh, uh, no matter what the, the, the circumstances of life are. Heavenly Father, bless our church, Three Rivers Baptist Church, and the congregants that go here. We ask these things in Jesus' name, amen. Now, the Bible refers to our body or to our fleshly body as a tabernacle, as a tabernacle, as found in uh, chapter 5, verse 1 here. The new body, the Bible says, we are looking forward to is called the temple. It's called the temple. The, the tabernacle represents the life and the temple represents the next life. The tabernacle was mostly made of wood, hay, and stubble. The next life will be made of uh, uh, precious stones. The Bible says what remains. In this verse, uh, chapter 5, verse 1, Luke, I need you to scour and find me a, a, a bottle of water. I'm kind of dizzy. Uh, in this verse, uh, Paul is saying, and I need you to hustle. Uh, Paul is saying that the, the tabernacle is a type of... Um, Fleshly body, wood, hay, stubble, right? Our bodies are wood, hay, stubble. Thank you. Uh, our bodies are getting, they get old and they, de they decay and our teeth break and our vision gets blurry. I, um, you know, I, I think it's a trick that they do at the doctor's office is they say, cover one eye and read that chart 15 yards away. 
And here you are with your eye, eye closed and your hand over your eye. And then they say, okay, switch eyes. Well, it takes a, it, it's going to take some time for this eye to acclimate. I just got done pressing it to my face. It's blurry. And they say, okay, cover the next one and read that. They're like, hmm, your, your vision's, you know, 2060. You know, you're like, what? what? Uh, so, and they did that to me. And I said, listen, I, I need to redo that because my vision, 2045. I'm like, no, my vision's 2025. And, and they said, well, sir, you, as you get older, I said, I know. But I just did this two years ago. My vision didn't get that bad. So we did it in 2025. Uh, but anyway, um, I just wanted to, you know. Uh, but uh, uh, our bodies fall apart and, and we get older and we, get, and we hurt. Last Saturday, uh, I, had, um, I had rheumatic fever when I was a kid. And one of the results of rheumatic fever is uh, premature arthritis. And I have arthritis. And it felt like my ankle joints, my knee joints, uh, my my uh, elbow joints, my shoulder joints. Um, I needed a joint. No, no, no. Um, uh, I felt I felt like uh, stiff. Like oh, yeah. I can't do this, and I'm only getting older, which means it's only gonna get worse. You know what it is? Wood hay stubble. Wood hay stubble. Randy. Wants to razz me sometimes. Oh, what are you, like 50 now? I'll smack you. <laughs> no, I'm not 50. And I said, it'll be your turn one day. It'll be your turn. And um, uh, let's see, uh, Deacon. Deacon will be like, what are you, like 50 now, Mr. Randy? Uh, and you'll be like, oh, I'll knock you out. You know, No, age ain't nothing to joke about, man. Age is that this isn't fun. It's not fun to, to be in this earthly tabernacle made of wood, hay, and stubble. And listen, when, in the Old Testament, when they put it all together, they did the best they could, and they put their heart and soul into it. I mean, they made it beautiful for the materials that they had. I think that's a representative. We should do the best that we can with the body that we have. But the tabernacle was made of that wood, hay, and, and stubble. And Paul says that our, our tabernacle is a fleshly type, and it's temporal. And God, he's talking about wood, uh, not wood, hay, stubble, but gold, silver, and precious stones. I believe that's the glorified body we receive. That's a glorified life, a life that is no more, no rust in heaven, no moths uh, in heaven, no robbers break through and steal in heaven, amen. I don't have to be worried physically in heaven. The gold, silver, and precious stones represent our heavenly life, while the wood, hay, and stubble represent an earthly life. Now, the tabernacle had uh, two divisions. The tabernacle, remember, the tabernacle is our fleshly body. The temple is our heavenly body. The tabernacle had two divisions. It had an outside, uh, and I don't mean the outside, but an, an, uh, an outer perimeter. It had an outside, which was a holy place, <clears throat> uh, and it had uh, an inside, which was the holy of holies. The holy of holies, and uh, a priest could enter the outside but only the high priest could enter the Holy of Holies. The Holy of, of Holies, uh, Lucas in Houston, the Holies of Holies. And I know you guys have probably heard that or read that because I know you guys have read through the Old Testament. The Holies of Holies was a room of gold. Um, uh, uh, it, was, it was a decked out room. The mercy seat was solid gold, the Bible teaches. It was 15 feet high, 15 feet wide, 15 feet long. Um, and I think it's kind of representative of Revelation 21, 16, where it says that heaven will be 1,500 by 1,500 by 1,500. Um, I, I think I mentioned that last week on Sunday night. Heaven, uh, uh, the way it's described is a perfect cube, uh, and the Holy of Holies was a perfect cube as they built it in the Bible. The outer room of the tabernacle was a picture of earth. Uh, the inner room was the tabernacle of the picture of heaven. Uh, the outer part of the tabernacle was made of wood, hay, stubble. The inner part was made of gold, silver, precious stones. Now, according to the Bible, what happens to the wood, hay, and stubble? Can anybody tell me what happens to the wood, hay, and stubble, mama? It burns up. <laughs> burns up. And um, uh, when does it burn up? At what judgment? Judgment seat of Christ. Correct, because that's when we are judged. Our works are judged. So that wood, hay, stubble burned up at the judgment seat of Christ. They'll be burned up forever gone. So therefore, the wood, hay, and the stubble that will be burned at the judgment seat of Christ are works that were done on earth for earthly good. I mean, that's really all it is. My works, the works of Jake Jackson, 
that will be burned up are the earthly works that I did for earthly gain. So um, uh, let's say uh, let's say I start a um, a tech company, a tech company because there's an opening for it, because man the the, the the world is ripe for it, and I have it all just kind of came together, right? And we go, man, I have the know-how, and I know how to do this, and I know how to do that, and I've got surrounded by people who have the know-how, and we just kind of do it, and man, it makes a bunch of money, and we sell a great product, and um, I'm able to buy a house and buy cars and, and, and able to live a pretty good life. Okay, building the company has no earthly, no earthly relevance whatsoever. But here's the neat thing about being a Christian. I can take my earthly works. I can take a business that I might have fell into or, or built and say, I'm going to use this business to use some of its money to put people on the mission field. I'm going to use some of this wood, hay, stubble. Only God can take wood, hay, stubble and turn it into gold, silver, precious stone. And take some of this for not, and turn it into something for eternity. Um, uh, and, there, and listen, though the, um, the examples could go on and on about earthly works and, and, uh, and earthly good. Those things will be burnt up. Heaven has no use for earthly works. Heaven wants to know, what did we do for heaven? I'm a citizen of heaven. The Bible says that we're just passing through. We are pilgrims. Passing through here, aliens, the Bible says, aliens in this world, passing through because we belong to another country, a greater country, a country that, is, that has God in it and Jesus in it and our loved ones have passed on and they have, uh, uh, they have passed their Ellis Island, amen. They've passed that death island and they've got into heaven and they're in heaven waiting on their loved ones, waiting for their glorified bodies and heaven needs nothing of earth. That's why, listen, that's why I can't remember who I was talking to. I said, you know, oh, oh, it, it was a, I was witnessing. And I asked a man, I said, if, uh, if you stood before God and he said, what do you have to give me to get into heaven? What are you going to give him? I asked him, what will you give God to get into heaven? Now, thank the Lord, it doesn't work that way. Uh, I'm glad that I don't stand there and Peter has a ledger book and his halo above his head and say, okay, here's your name right here. I have you, Mr. Jackson. Now, what do you have to give? Well, well, we can't take it with it. They told us we can't take it with us. They told us that we couldn't take anything with us. That's why a, a, a lot of folks are, are buried with things, buried with valuables, bur buried with treasure, buried with um, uh, uh, things of value or that they can trade their way into heaven. And I told this young fella, I said, the only way that gets into heaven, what are you going to tell, what are you going to tell God? And I quoted that verse. What does it gain a man, if, or what does it, yeah, profit a man if he gains the whole world and lose his own soul? What can a man give in exchange for his soul? God says, your soul is in the balance. What are you going to give me for your soul's destiny? What can you hand him? I said, you can't give him anything. What God wants is to see the stamp, the seal of Jesus and the Holy Spirit of God on you. And the only way to do that is to confess the name of Jesus Christ. He that believeth on the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son is, uh, is condemned already. Condemned already. The wrath of God abideth on him. How do you get that wrath off of you? The blood of Jesus Christ. As we heard in Sunday school, ain't nobody concerned about no blood on no cross. Right? Hang that guy. Uh, now, we didn't have that taught in Sunday school. We were watching a a, a, a gospel, watching the gospel in Sunday school, um, and uh, uh, talking about the, the new American gospel that's being preached. And um, uh, God wants to know, uh, 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 well, how are you going to get into heaven? He's not concerned with that. So I, there's nothing I can bring with me, and you know that. So what's going to last in heaven? The things that will last in heaven, the gold, silver, and precious stone, are the things a Christian does on earth for heaven. What are we doing for heaven? What am I doing for heaven. Of course, not to gain heaven, but for my gain in heaven. You understand that? What am I going to, now Jesus is all my gain and I, and I get that and I know that we'll take the crowns that we receive and cast them at the feet of Jesus for if it were not for Jesus, we wouldn't have made it there anyway. 
But God says there is a reward for you and you can lose your reward by taking that gold, silver, and precious stones and basically cashing it in, if you will, for wood, hay, and stubble. There are all kinds of people who are on the track for God's blessings and they say, I am willing to, I am willing to sacrifice the altar of the, uh, the future on the altar of the immediate. Let me say that again. There are all kinds of people who are willing to sacrifice the future on the altar of the immediate, and God has a plan for them, blessings for them that are out in the future if they'll wait for the crop to come in, but they don't. They want it now, just like the prodigal wanted his inheritance now, and they take up the blessings of God, and they go out and they use their health for riotous living, and they spend up their health trying to gain wealth for the comforts of life. And by the time that they're old, by the time that life is coming to its end, they're trying to use their, their gained health to buy back, or their gained wealth to buy back their health. That's what they're trying to do. The world's trying to do that. I saw a sign that some, that's, that's where I got that from. Is it says that uh, uh, youth is spent trying to gain wealth. Age is spent trying to re buy back your health. Spending that wealth and trying to buy back your health when the fact of the matter is is God would have given us just enough health and just enough wealth, all that we needed if we would have stayed on the straight and narrow. Just enough. It doesn't say that you'll never be sick and it doesn't say that you'll never suffer need. But it, God says, I will give you all that you need. I will give you what you need. I will give you what you need. And, 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 and the Christians, God, we, gotta, we have to get this out of our head that death is not a loss. Death is a victory. If we die in Christ, if we die in his will, all kinds of folks who have believed on Jesus Christ, who, who, who kept uh, uh, getting too close and testing God's patience, and God said, you know what? I'm, I, I got to take you out for you to stop doing what you're doing because I can look out and see that you're not going to stop doing what you're doing. I've given you ample time to repent. I've given you ample time to get right with me. I've given you ample time to turn back and do those works again and you won't do them. I'm going to have to take you out to save you from, from, from ruining yourself even more. So I'll take you out. Now, there's uh, Christians can die in sin. Thank God they don't go to hell. They can, but I don't want to die. I don't want to. I, I don't want to be a born again Christian and die uh, 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 choking on my own vomit from alcohol. I don't want to be a, a born again Christian and die from an overdose. I don't want to be a born again Christian and die from riotous living. I don't want that. I thank God for uh, for enough grace that folks are that many folks have have awoken and come to themselves in the pig pen and came on home. Um, uh, but this body is, is, is temporal and it's going to fall apart. So with that in mind, knowing, okay, if I live for me here, that'll be burned up in the future. But if I live for me there, that lasts, that's everlasting wood, hay, stubble, gold, silver, precious stones. So when the, our works are tried by fire, they will last because God's, because they're precious. These gold, silver, precious stone, they're precious in God's sight. Now, let me give you a couple examples of the temporal and the eternal. So when we as Christians do works on earth, we have to make one of two choices. So here I am doing these, doing these works, right? You and I, we're doing all these works in life. We have two choices. Uh, we can do something to build the temple tabernacle build up our wealth, build up our health, get that beach body, as they say, you know, and, and uh, uh, feel good, look good, do good, you know. We can build up this temporal tabernacle uh, uh, in the things of earth, which are wood, hay, and stubble, or we can spend our lives doing uh, the things that will end up as gold, silver, precious stones. Now, what's the difference? What's the difference? Um, the difference is this. One example of what the Bible is teaching is um, welfare versus soul winning. You say welfare versus soul winning. Yes, in every American city, there's a rescue mission. We have a great big one right downtown, a rescue mission. One of the uh, missions are to, um, uh, uh, many of the missions, most of them, are run by a board or a, a group of advisors that consists of uh, all these different kinds of denominations. Uh, down at the, uh, the, the rescue mission, there'll be a, mini there'll be a, a, a Lutheran minister um, the uh, Presbyterian minister, a Catholic minister, a uh, non-denominational minister, a missionary alliance minister, and so, so, so many others. 
Uh, there may be even a, um, uh, an American Baptist minister there, you know. Uh, but uh, there are two reasons, two reasons to have a rescue mission in your city. Number one, <clears throat> number one, the members on that board uh, uh, have their reasons and uh, the director has his reasons. And many of these boards say, uh, we want to keep uh, the city, uh, they, that's how they get grants and things like that, by keeping the drug addicts and the drunks and the homeless from making the city look ugly. Well, we don't want the city to look ugly, so we bring him into the rescue mission. We want a nice-looking city. Um, but then somebody that's right with God says, well, the main mission is to keep people out of hell. That's the main mission. Folks, I, I've said this, and I know it may sound, it, it, for, for new people that may hear this, it may sound indifferent, but I would rather, from my point of view, on, 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 not my point of view, from the Scripture's point of view, it's better to die as a Lazarus than it is to die as a rich man. It's better to die poor and sore with the dogs licking your wounds and eating the crumbs that fall off the hot, hot dog cart going down the, and, and, and panhandling and digging in the trash to find food. Jamie and I, I a, a few weeks ago, we went downtown to um, Kilwin's Ice Cream. And uh, I saw a man right outside the store, people sitting there with their families and whatnot. It was before it started getting cold and, and everybody sitting around. And a man was digging right there in the trash. In the, and I don't mean a dumpster in the alley. I mean in the trash can right out front of the store and pulled out what he could find as food and put it in his mouth and ate it. Get this. Better to die and go to heaven in the circumstances of that man than it is to live in Cherry Hill and drive a, drive a, 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 a Mercedes and have a million dollars in the bank and be on your designer furniture watching your big screen large TV with all your friends over for the game and die and go to hell. Absolutely. It's better to be a poor man in heaven than a rich man in hell. I would rather go to heaven and hear the Lord say, Jake, I'm ashamed of you. Why, were you why, why didn't you do more for me? I saved you. I would rather go to heaven with my head bowed and in tears and being embarrassed that I didn't do enough for the Lord than to go to hell and be the most popular person. Absolutely, without a doubt, I don't care. And, and you'd have to be a fool, an absolute fool to say anything otherwise because hell is not what the world makes you think it to be. You won't go there and see your friends. You're not going to crack open a cold one. Uh, th th you're not going to be, it's not a party. You're not going to be there with your cliques and your bros and your homies and your gang and the block and you're not going to be with them people. You're not going to be with your family. All you're going to be doing is smashing and crashing and thrashing into other people who are smashing and crashing and thrashing and screaming and yelling, and cursing, and asking why. I don't, I'm, I don't, nope. There's nothing in this, there's nothing this side of eternity you could give me in exchange for that. Not, not one thing. Not one. If the devil came to me with a contract tonight and said, hey, let me take you up to the heights and let you look down on the cities." And let me show you all the kingdoms of the world, Jake. Let me show you the biggest yachts and the most beautiful women. Let me show you the piles of money. Let me show you the glitter and the gold. Let me show you the glit and glamour. Let me show you all of that. And you can have it if you'll just sell me your soul. You know what I'm so glad about? I already sold my soul. I already sold it. You say, who'd you sell it to? I sold it to the Lord Jesus Christ. He bought it. I decided to go, go along with his plan. I decided to go with him. But if the devil came to me, now the devil knows he can't get my soul. He knows he can't have it. So here's the temptation, Christian. Here it is. He can't get your soul. You're born again, amen? You're born again, hallelujah, you're born again. He can't come to you and say, but let me sell your, sell your soul to me. But the devil comes along and he says, well, what can I buy you for? Can I buy you for a little bit of comfort? Can I buy, and listen, folks, a lot of us think that it would take a whole lot of money 
for the devil or a whole lot of stuff for the devil to buy us away from Jesus. Take something incredible. But the fact of the matter is if we compare ourselves to Judas, Judas sold him for 30 pieces of silver. To be honest with you, sometimes I sold Jesus for less. What? Sometimes I didn't. I was ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Sometimes I was a sellout. I didn't stand up for what was right. I didn't, did, I didn't do what was right. And I walked away ashamed and embarrassed going, I'll never do that again. I'll never act that way again. My Savior is worthy for me to live right. My Savior is worthy. Listen, we just, what, what do we sing? Um, uh, now in flesh appearing. Now in flesh appearing. You want to know why I follow Jesus Christ in the Bible? Because it's proved itself. If Zeus would have proved himself, I'd follow him. If Muhammad would prove himself, I'd follow him. If Buddha would prove himself, I'd follow him. If Joseph Smith would prove himself, I'd follow him. If uh, uh, David Koresh and all these cultists and all these weirdos would um, uh, 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 prove themselves, I'd follow them. But not a one of them have. They're all dead. They're all got a bunch of dry bones laying in the grave somewhere. But my Savior lives today. My Savior up from the grave, he arose with a mighty triumph over his foes. And if you stand against Christ, you are anti-Christ. So I am anti-you if you are anti-Christ because I am pro-Christ. I follow Christ because he's real. I follow God because he's real. The God of this book who said, my word shall not pass. Not one jot, not one tittle, not one little iota of my book. The earth will not pass away until all of that has been fulfilled. And every bit of every prophecy of this has come to light. And come to pass, and we're just waiting on one more, baby. We as born-again Christians, born-again believers, we're waiting on one. And that is the last trump sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we shall meet him in the air and be like him one day. And I look forward to that. So I want to invest in the eternal. I don't want to be, I, I don't want to um, take my life and waste it on the temporal. Temporal, temporary, no, I want eternal. I want everlasting, everlasting. Now, uh, Christmas is coming up, and what do we do? We give um, benevolent, great, kind, loving gifts to each other. That's what it's all about, uh, giving gifts to people. Um, uh, and it can be done for, and it can be done for, he for heaven or, or hell, if you will. Uh, and, I don't, uh, and I say that in the, in the context of temporal or eternal. I mean, here we are, we're feeding, we're feeding and we're clothing and we're visiting the, the most destitute and the least of these people in our city. But if we don't give them the gift of the gospel, we really did nothing for them. What good, is, what good are warmed fingers and toes if they're just going to die and go to hell? What good is a filled up belly? It's better to die of starvation and go to heaven than but die with a filled belly and go to hell. I want to make sure our church, and our church always has, but I feel that uh, uh, it, it, um, I can't just uh, ride the wave of what we built ourselves on and, and think that wave is just going to continue. If we don't keep creating that wave, a wave gets closer to the shore and it dies down. Let's keep that wave going and that wave is souls. That wave is, that wave is soul winning. And I wanna make sure that if we do give gloves, we give, soul, we give the gospel with it. That if we do give coats and we do give food and we do give gifts, that we give the gospel with it. If somebody dives and leaves all his money to say um, Purdue, Fort Wayne, they die and they leave all their money to help fund, um, say, um, cancer research. I don't know if they do that or... Um, autism research or um, certain development plans and whatnot, um, uh, but they die and they give all their money for research programs. You know, what you know what he's doing it for? This world. He's doing it for this world. You see, a lot of people, they, they, they get their graduation speeches or they get a ceremony and they say, go make your mark on this world. No, make your mark in heaven. The world will take care of itself. Uh, Solomon says in Ecclesiastes that that which was will be and that which will be will fade away and it'll come about again. He said there's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new under the sun. That's why uh, if, if, the Lord, if the Lord entrusted me with wealth, I would want to make sure that I used it for eternity. Would I, would I, would I play, buy a home for us to live in? Of course I would. I need a home. Would I buy um, trustworthy vehicles? Of course I would. Would I um, feed myself? Of course I would. Would I buy a nice jacket? Yes, of course I would. Would I go on a vacation? Yes, of course I would. And so would you. 
But I wouldn't live for those things. Those things are not what I wouldn't buy more than I need. I wouldn't do more than this isn't a bid for wealth. I'm not saying, Lord, I wouldn't do those things because I'm a human and I'd probably do something stupid with it anyway. But if God can see me being faithful with the dollar, well, let me give you 10, see if you'll be faithful with that. Let me give you 100, let me give you 1,000, let me give you 10,000, let me give you, and see if you'll be faithful. And all God's looking for are stewards. You see, you don't obey God and he blesses you tremendously. You obeyed God as a good steward and he entrusted you with more to be a steward over. You see, 10% isn't God's. 10% of my money isn't God's. 100% of it is. It's all his. He just says, let me see if you be faithful with that 10%. Let me see if you be faithful with it. Every breath I draw, every, every thought I have, every moment I live, it's all God's. It's all his. I want to be a good steward of it. A good steward. Now, uh, uh, people who donate money for research and, uh, and saving the animals and different things like that, they're doing works for this world. It's wood, hay, and stubble. But if someone else to die and give money to um, Three Rivers Baptist Church bus program and missions program and um, Christian school to where we could hire a couple of teachers, Christian-based teachers, and because um, right now the teacher we have is just a heathen, uh, so I just, um, and to, um, uh, you know, I don't know, fix the building up a little bit and to, to just position ourselves to really thrive and focus on soul winning and baptizing and evangelizing. And, and, and they were said to, well, you know, we're, uh, uh, I'm on my deathbed and I'm going to write a, excuse me, I'm going to write a check to uh, Hiles Anderson College because I believe in training pastors. I believe in training missionaries. Okay, then what is that money going to? It's, yes, it's going to a, a building made of mortar and brick and drywall and wood and screws and glass. Of course, it's going to the building, but it's not the building that's spending it. It's the people that run that building. And it is incumbent upon the people that run that organization to spend that money in a spiritual way that goes toward gold, silver, precious stones. Gold, silver, precious stones. Uh, and that's what I want to make sure that we're doing. Why? So more people can be kept out of hell. Now that's done for heaven. That's done for heaven. So ask yourself, are there things that I'm reading that are wood, hay, and stubble? Or is it gold, silver, precious stones? Folks, there's only, there's only one book that's eternal, and that's the Bible. That's the Bible. And for the English-speaking people, it's the King James Bible. Now, when we get to heaven, I don't know that we'll have a Schofield King James Bible up there. You know what I mean? I don't know if, I don't know. We may have the, I think the originals are there. You know, you know what? The original is there. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Uh, uh, but um, uh, I believe God's words are um, uh, preserved for us. I believe for us, the English speaking people, it's the King James Bible and its translations. It's gold, silver, precious stones. It's gold, silver, Gold, silver, precious stones. Folks, your devotional book is not your Bible. That's wood, hay, stubble. Unless, you, unless it, it, it's used to help you and aid you in this book. Folks, the, the, the New International Version, that's wood, hay, stubble. It's not the King James, it's wood, hay, stubble. Television time versus Bible time, that's wood, hay, stubble. Folks, one is wood, one is, one is, one is, uh, one is wood, one is hay, one is stubble. The other is gold, silver, and precious stones. So there's four promises very quickly. Four promises very quickly that the Christian can have uh, that God says these are continual. These things will never cease. God promises um, uh, continue, uh, I've tried to practice this word over and over again, uh, a continuum in these four areas on four things that I'm going to give you. Uh, if our lives are going to be worthwhile, and I want my life to be worthwhile, if my life is going to be worth living, if I want to feel like I have purpose and meaning, uh, and I want my works to pass the fire test, um, then I've got to wrap my life around four very specific things. Number one, uh, uh, the Christian. You say, the Christian, you are a Christian. Yes, wrap your life around other Christians. Be involved around other Christians. Invest your life, and not only as, as fellowship, but also invest your life in fellow Christians. 
Invest your life in your fellow man. Um, uh, that's uh, number one. Number two is the Bible. Uh, I've said it many times that eternity is just an investment. It's an investment in the promises of God in a market that will not crash. Number one, uh, invest your life in other Christians. Number two, invest your life in the King James Bible. Invest your life in the King James Bible. Read it, learn it, love it, live it. Learn it. Um, uh, I have it written down in one of my Bibles where, where um, uh, that's just a, a read it, learn it, love it, live it. Uh, and I want to live by the Bible. I want to. And I know I fall short, but I want to. Number one, the Christian. Number two, the Bible. Number three, the church. Invest your time, your energy, your efforts in church. All right, I don't mean like Kenneth Copeland said today where he said, folks, you ought to be giving your money. You could hear it in his voice. He wants your money. These prosperity, name it and claim it, word of faith preachers, they don't care. They don't care how many, he said he had a fleet of jets. And this isn't me, um, uh, um, uh, uh, mad at somebody else's success. I'm mad that he's using Jesus as his, his trampoline for success. The gospel he is trampling underfoot as his success. Um, the church, the church, how do we keep the lights on? How do we keep it too hot? How do we keep it too cold? How do we keep the temperature never right, you know? How do we keep, listen, and, and, and all the things that we, that we once did that we're trying to do again. Missions support, the bus ministry, a school academy, all those things. All the things that, we, that we've done, the conferences that we went to, and all the things that we've done, the, the, um, the, uh, the banquets that we've had, and the, uh, the conferences that we've hosted have been to reach people and to uh, uh, encourage the Christian by investing in the church, not just with your dollars, but when the Bible speaks of the church, um, he's not talking about some universal, invisible thing. He's talking about the local New Testament church. He's talking about the church the Bible says, and be ye planted in. Be planted. Be planted. He's talking about the local New Testament, and I'll throw this in, Baptist church. Not non-denominational. You know what, what I hear when people say non-denominational? I mean, I hear non-committal. Because we don't like commitment. We don't like for a label to be put on us. You're a chicken. Real that. Uh, you're, <laughs> uh, you're, that that's chicken stuff. Well, we're non-denominational. No, you're a coward. Or you're, you're unlearned. You're unlearned, yeah. Get to know real Baptist history. And I don't mean of the, of, of the mean teacher or the mean preacher, but I'm talking about the people who were martyred and murdered that carried on the name of Jesus under the Baptist name. There's a reason why we're Baptists, and if you know the history of it, you'll learn the history of it. Maybe we'll teach it. Maybe we'll use um, Sunday nights to teach Baptist history one of these days. But Baptist distinctives, right back there, that's why. We be Baptists, amen? We be Baptists, and there's a reason why, and I'm not backing down off, and I'm not taking it off our sign. Well, it's just, you know, we want to draw more people in. Last I checked is Christ will build his church. Um, and, and by the way, when we get to heaven, uh, I don't believe it says um, Heaven Baptist Church on it. I don't think it, but while we're here, we're using the Baptist denomination as the vehicle to use to get out the gospel. And one preacher said, if you're going to go to heaven, you might as well go first class. Baptist, amen, Baptist. Uh, number one, the Christian. Number two, the Bible. Number three, the church. And lastly, number four, the nation of Israel. You say the nation of Israel. Yeah, the, nat the nation of Israel plays a, I, I don't know if you know this, but it plays a pretty big part in prophecy. God is not done with Israel. God's not done with, is it, with Israel. It's not just some little sliver on a map somewhere. That's God's place of prophecy that he's going to send Jesus Christ back again one day. And from that little place, Jesus Christ will sit on his throne in Jerusalem and rule the entire world. The nation of Israel. 
Those things are perpetual. God is going to continue to use it. So I tell you, listen, I, and I'm not going to ask for a raise of hands, but how many of us pray for Israel? Well, what do I need to really pray for it for? God's kind of got it all in control. It's going to happen anyway. What do I need to pray for it for? That's, that's almost like Calvinistic thinking. Well, people that are going to be saved are you know, going to be saved whether I have anything to do with it or not. Well, then what's the point of go ye therefore and teach all nations? What's the point of he that winneth souls is wise? If he's going to get saved anyway, who's the guy that wins him? Nobody? So who? Well, then why is that in the Bible? What's that teaching all about? The nation of Israel needs its supporters' prayer. The nation of Israel needs to, they may not know, but the one who holds back the the missiles and the mortars and the, the, the bombs and the bullets and the nukes that the enemies of Israel want to drop down on it, the God that, that uh, is of that country, the God that chose that nation and those people, I think maybe he'd like to hear from us sometimes that Israel's in our prayers. I've said it, I told my dad, I said, I'd like to put a, 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 a flag of Israel up here too. He said, ooh. He said, that might cause some, some friction. I said, with who? With who? Who's, who's, who's that going to offend? The nation of Israel? Come on now. We're supposed to back them up. We're supposed to back them up. I know that we're God's people. I get that, that the nation, that there is no difference between the two. Now the Jew and the Gentile, we're no longer under the rule, the law, but we're both now under the law of grace. I mean, I get all, I get all that. We're all the children of God. Yeah, 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 yeah. But God's not done with Israel yet. And we're supposed to pray that. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. What's it say? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that's what we have to pray continually. But what are we working for? Hey, let me tell you, and I'm done. Every labor of love, every labor of love you do for the Lord, every dollar you spend, everything you do, Every, every moment you spend, you're building up. Hey, listen, I, I get it. Three kids in the class or, or 30 kids in the class. That's, that's, that's gold, silver, precious stones. That's gold, silver, precious stone. Every time you got to open the doors to the nursery, that's gold, silver, precious stones. Every time the, the, uh, uh, that, uh, uh, the, the PA and the audio, and the, that's gold, silver, precious stones. Because we're not doing it to be like the Joneses. We're doing it because... COVID affected us. Listen, we may never have done this had COVID not come along. But think of the thousands of people that have been, that have heard and, and seen videos from Three Years Baptist Church that might not have heard it otherwise. We've had people send, and, and not big money or anything, but 50 bucks here, $100 here, $200 there, nine bucks here, $40 here. People send money and say, hey, here's a love gift to Three Years Baptist Church. I said, whoa, people are sending money. Let's get that QR code set up now. Uh, I said, <laughs> uh, but what is that gold, silver, precious stone? Gold, silver, precious stones. Wood, hay, stubble. What do you invest in your life in? Luke, pursue whatever you want to pursue, but measure it against temporal versus eternal. Measure it against temporal versus eternal. You know, the kids talk all the time about what they want to be, what they want to do when they grow up. That's all well and good. Houston, he... Um, He's a lover of food. And I don't mean just like he loves to eat, but he, he, he sees it differently. He's one of those guys that if he was a wine, it, well, no, I'm not going to use alcohol, that if he were to take a bite of something, he would say, oh, does that have nutmeg in it? You know, he's a, <laughs> a foodie. Yeah, he's a foodie. And he said some years ago, he said, I would like to open up my own restaurant. Cool. Open up a restaurant. Fill people's bellies Fill your pockets, do good work, be successful, put your name on it, but do it with all your heart, not because you want to be famous and have the mayor come to your, uh, uh, come to your establishment, but because you are a child of God. You're a child of God, so do it with all your heart. You're a child of God, so do it decently in order. You're a child of God, so put your mind in it and put your heart into it and do it, the Bible says, as unto the Lord. As unto the Lord. So whatever you find yourself doing, temporal, wood, hay, stubble, eternal, gold, silver, precious stones. Would you bow your head and close your eyes, please, as we pray? Heavenly Father, I thank you for this evening. I thank you that you've laid it out in your, in your word. 
about things that last and things that will fade away. Things that will, wow, our works do follow us for eternity. Or we could suffer loss, a large amount of loss. And Lord, I, I uh, the devil tempts me just like anybody else and in, in different ways uh, about my life and my happiness and my, my wants, my needs. And I think the devil really gets frustrated with the Christian who he frustrates and that frustrated Christian goes to God. Help that to be the Christian. When the devil comes and, 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 and rattles our windows, rattles our cage, and, and, and puts us on our heels that we turn and run to you. Instead of listening to him, instead of, uh, and he doesn't always come as a roaring lion, even though he is. He, sometimes, Lord, he's very subtle, very slick, very persuasive and deceptive. Lord, help us to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Help us to be so in tune with you that we say, no, that's, that's temporal living. That's temporal. I want to be living for the eternal. Our Lord, help us to invest our lives and our time and treasure and talent wisely. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, I want to share this with you. Um, we're done. You can get up and leave if you need to. But um, Autumn, she plays the violin and the flute, apparently. Uh, and I said, she came in this morning, and I said, hey. She looked at me, I said, when are you going to play that violin in church for us? Oh, I, and she blushed. No, I don't, I don't, I'm better at the flute than I am the violin. I said, what? I heard you were like Fort Wayne Philharmonic good. And she blushed. Oh, no, I'm not.